Hello, friends. Happy Tuesday. If you're in Calgary, hopefully you are staying dry and uh, hopefully you're having a good week regardless. Welcome to Flames Nation Live. It's Steinberg with you from our Sportsnet 960 downtown studio. And here we are. We are uh, just sitting, waiting, wishing um, and seeing if Johnny Gaudreau is going to sign a new contract with the Calgary Flames. First of all, one thing I have to point out is, yes, indeed, I am playing hurt. I am missing a... Uh, I'm missing an arm on my glasses. Um, so, uh, yes, I have not, th that does not fail to escape me. Um, I, it's, it's been a bit of an issue. The replacement player pair is coming in. So I wanted to make sure that I pointed that out so you didn't think that uh, I didn't notice that. Uh, who do we have on with us? Mike first in. Sasha checking in from Montreal. We got Dustin and JF. Bonsoir to you as well, JF. Uh, along with us, questions, comments, welcome on our live chat if you are with us live on this Tuesday. Flames Nation Live brought to you by DoorDash where uh, off-season, in-season, doesn't matter. You can always uh, use our promo code at uh, Flames Nation Live. So the, the promo code, pretty simple. It's FNLiveDD. Here's the deal. Download the app, create an account, and then once you do that, uh, plug in that promo code FNLiveDD, and you'll be getting 25% off and free delivery on your first order. That's right. That easy. Promo code FNLiveDD. Bam, snap of a finger. You have got... 25% off and free delivery on your first order at DoorDash, who brings you Flames Nation Live each and every time. Um, Brooks in with us as well. Uh, thank you very much for being on with us, Brooks. And uh, I, I guess I guess the big topic as we sit here right now is what things are going to look like. As you get your questions or comments in on the live chat, I mean, the main thing that we're talking about right now, the main thing that we're waiting for right now is some sort of resolution on the Johnny Gaudreau front. And until we figure out what's going to happen with Johnny, you know, as we are uh, sitting here on a Tuesday, this is uh, June 14th. So Wednesday, June 15th is the four week countdown until unrestricted free agency starts. And thus the four week countdown until a Johnny becomes an unrestricted free agent and B the flames no longer have the ability to give him that eighth and five that that eighth year that nobody else can give him and and that is a big time advantage the flames have compared to other teams so yeah it's it's starting to get into crunch time you know it's been six weeks and that's five weeks and now we're almost four weeks away from unrestricted free agency the draft is less than a month away uh, the stanley cup finals start on wednesday so that's kind of what we're waiting for right now and and in a lot of ways like i, I don't think it holds up everything um and I don't think that it means the Flames can't get anything done until Johnny signs, but I do think that it holds things up when it comes to the Matthew Kachuk conversation. I don't think it holds things up as much when it comes to the pot possibility or potential of re-signing Andrew Machapani because I think Machapani and that deal you can get independent of the other ones, but definitely the Kachuk situation I think hinges on what Johnny does, first of all, in terms of cap structure, and second of all, I think if, if Johnny signs, there's a better chance that Matthew signs. I think if Johnny doesn't sign, then there's less of a chance that John, that, that uh, Matthew does sign long-term, uh, even though he is still under team control for the next year. So it's kind of a holding pattern until we decide what, or until the Flames decide, and until we find out what's going to happen on the Johnny Gaudreau front. Um, Here's some of the uh, conversation. Uh, Derek says, is Johnny going to Philly? Uh, Brooks retorts, Johnny's signing long-term. No way the Flames can let him walk for nothing. Um, Dylan says, I think all the Philly rumors are fabricated. Um, and Brooks adds on, Kachuk signs too. No way True Living lets the top regular season line get broken up. And, you know, I tend to agree with Brooks. I do think, even though, you know, here we are sitting in a situation where nothing's decided and we're still waiting, I do still think that when next season starts, both Matthew Kachuk and Johnny Gaudreau will be part of this team. And, you know, if I were to be a betting man, I would say that both guys are signed long-term. Um, I still think it's in the Flames' best interest 
obviously on the hockey on the hockey like uh, for the hockey team and on the ice surface, but also just overall business wise, I think it, it just is in Calgary's best interest to re-sign Johnny Gaudreau and to sign him long term. He sells tickets, he sells jerseys, he is the franchise player in so many different ways, and I just I don't think you win. I don't think there's any way you can win if he walks for nothing. And I think because of that, Murray Edwards right at the very top. If, if I were to be a betting man, I think that Murray Edwards right at the top is going to step in and, and say that, yeah, we're going to re-sign Johnny Gaudreau and we're going to pay him what he wants. But here's the thing. Even if Murray does that, there's still a chance that Johnny decides to go look elsewhere because, as we mentioned, he's less than a month. He's just over four weeks away from being able to test it out. He's just over four weeks away from being able to see what unrestricted free agency is like. And you cannot blame him for wanting to to test that out. You cannot blame him to see what that world is all about. He's never done it before. And this will really be his only chance to do it. You know, I, I, I guess there are other options. People have suggested, well, maybe a team signs him for one year and then signs him for eight years to get the full. And, and maybe, but... I, I think that's less likely myself. So just knowing all that, I think that, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, don't, I certainly wouldn't blame Johnny, Johnny if he decided to go see what else is out there and see what unrestricted free agency feels like. And maybe he still cu- signs back with the Flames for seven, but that's kind of the situation that we're in right now. And, you know, I think there's a different conversation about whether or not this is, you know, the Flames should have let it get to this point. And there's a different conversation about whether or not um, there was a deal that could have been done last summer, all that type of stuff. But as of right now, Johnny's got the hammer. Johnny's in full control. And all the Flames can do is hand him the best possible offer. And all they can do is put an offer in front of him and his agent, Louis Gross, and and be okay with that offer and not feel like they're leaving anything on that table. That's all the Flames can do right now. Use that eighth year to their advantage and then see what happens. Let's uh, jump back in on the live chat. Um, JP says, to ensure fiscal flexibility, I think the young D like Valimaki and Mackey need to make the club. How crazy is it to sell high in Shillington to pair with uh, Monaghan for a number two center in return? Well, I don't think you're getting that. I don't think that you're getting Shillington and Monaghan for a number two center in return. Um, I don't think there's, first of all, best case scenario on the Monaghan front is that he comes back next year. The second hip surgery is a big one and he is a revitalized player. I'm not saying that that is the most probable outcome, but that is the the best possible outcome if you're the Calgary Flames is that he comes back next year and and he's just the the best version of Sean Monaghan that we have seen. Or um, not that we've seen, but that that we've seen since the hip surgeries. And that, you know, maybe he can get back to 15, 20 goal form or something like that. Is that probable? Maybe not. But you're not buying him out because he would have to sign off on the buyout. And I just don't think you're trading Sean Monaghan. I don't think there's value for a guy that has had two hip surgeries and that has not been a really productive player of late. And I don't think the Flames trading away a guy a year away from unrestricted free agency and having to give up the assets for a team to take on that contract is going to make sense. So to answer the question, I I don't think it's realistic, JP, for them to be able to to parlay Shillington and Monaghan into a number two center. That being said, the first point of your part, if they do end up signing both of Kachuk and Gaudreau long-term, I think we're going to have to see one of, if not both, of Valimaki and Mackey on the big team next year. And I say that because... They're going to need low-cost options on the fence. I don't know if they're going to be able... Like, I don't think Zadorov comes back if Kachuk and Gaudreau are signed long-term. In fact, I think it's doubtful that Good Branson even comes back in that respect. Better chance for Good Branson than Zadorov, but you know, I think it's a realistic possibility that neither of those guys come back if Kachuk and Gaudreau sign long term just because of the cap situation. So they're gonna need a low cost option or two, like Valimaki and Mackey, to probably be playing full time minutes next year. Um Pat, what do you think the chances are of Mangiapane or Shillington getting an offer sheet should the Flames tender them and uh, let them go to free agency? Well, I don't think, like, I, I never worry too much um, about offer sheets. I would worry more about Mangiapane than I would Shillington on an offer sheet standpoint. But to get 
Manjapana to sign one. It would have to be quite like it would have to be Kakanyemi, even may, maybe more so than the Kakanyemi offer sheet to get Manjapani to sign that. But I would say I would worry more about an offer sheet for Manjapani than I would for Shillington in saying that. I they happen so infrequently that I don't really have them on my radar all that often. Period. Um, JF says, Valimaki doesn't stand out in Stockton right now. Not sure of his future in the NHL. Um, and I'm curious to see what next training camp looks like for Valimaki. I very much am. Um, Dustin says, I like Rizicka. I'd like to see him come up. He has to start using that body, though. He's a big guy. It's something that he's trying to grow more and more into. Um, and I do think there's another low-cost option at forward the Flames would be able to use right from the beginning of next season. Jesse says, does including any combination of Valimaki, Shillington, Dubé, uh, Zari as, package, as a package incentivize a team like Arizona to take Monaghan for, say, a Chikrin? Based on what I've heard in terms of what the Coyotes are looking for in a Jacob Chikrin deal, like the Flames are going to have to do significantly more than that. And I doubt Monaghan, like maybe Monaghan could be part of it. But like, I think you're having to give up a significant draft pick to move Monaghan. I really do. And that's why I don't think it makes any sense, whether it's part of a package or not. Um, I think that you're going to have to give up something significant to make that happen. Um I mean, even you take a look back to was it the Yarn Croak deal or the it was the Toffoli deal. The Flames had to give up an asset to make the money work in moving Pitlick to Montreal. Remember, they had to give up a pick and Monahan's more money. So I, I just don't see Monah a Monahan trade being viable. I'm not saying it's not possible because I think it is, but I don't think it makes sense for the Flames. I'm not saying they wouldn't do that. I don't. I don't make the calls. I just don't agree with giving up a significant asset to move Monaghan out and Chikrin's going to cost the world. I don't know if the Flames have the assets to bring a Chikrin in at this point, just based on they don't have their first round pick this year. Um, now, that doesn't mean they couldn't use first round picks down the road. I just, I would be, I, I, I'm doubtful that a guy like Chikrin could land in Calgary. I think that another team ends up landing him when it's all said and done. And I just, I think realistically, you have to be prepared that if they trade Monahan, the Flames are giving up a significant asset to move that money out. And because I understand why they may not want to do that, I think it's unrealistic for Monahan to be moved. I think the most realistic option is for Sean to be here with Calgary. And that's why I say the best case scenario for the team is for Sean to be recovered. The double hip surgery being a good thing for him and that maybe he can be more effective as a player next year than he was this past season. Um, and again, what are the chances of that? I don't know, but that is the best case scenario. And you know what? Even if that doesn't happen and they don't trade him and he's here next year, there's one year left on the deal. And I would much rather the Flames ride out a contract of Monaghan if he's not going to be a super effective player and then part ways at the end of that contract as opposed to trading away an asset to not have him on the books anymore. I think there are other options that you could explore that would cost less less asset-wise to be able to clear some cap flexibility. Final thing that we need to talk about when it comes to Monaghan the Johnny Gaudreau factor and just that relation. Like he and Johnny are, are like best friends. And we all saw the, the moment with Monaghan and Johnny um, after the game seven win. So that also I think needs to be factored in when having this conversation. Uh, Lou asks, who do the Flames go after if they can't re-sign Johnny? Uh, I'd go Forsberg from the Preds. I think there's a chance they'd go after Forsberg. Don't know if this is the place that he would choose. Maybe the Swedish factor helps Calgary um, because they're building or have built Little Sweden here in, in southern Alberta. But Forsberg, Kadri would be the two. I, you know, Kadri is going to be significantly sought after, although Colorado might make a play to bring him back. Forsberg would be interesting. You know, maybe you can make a, I, I think that a combination, for instance, of Forsberg and Lindholm on a line would be really, really good. Um, so maybe he's a guy that they go after, but that, that's really the only guy in free agency that they could go in and chase in that regard. Maybe there's a trade out there that could make sense as well. Um, Andrew says, seems like moving Lucic after his bonus is paid is more likely and probably cheaper than moving Monaghan. I agree. 
that seems more like uh, more likely when it's all said and done. Uh, Jesse following up uh, says, I would have thought Shillington's value would be more substantial as a promising top 4D, but that makes sense. I don't think it's crazy, Jesse, that they trade Shillington. I don't. Um, because as we talked about earlier, Mackey, let's, let's just take Connor Mackey, right? So we know that Chris Tanev is the type of guy that elevates whoever he plays with. Quinn Hughes, Noah Hannafin, Oliver Shillington, right? So we know, remember how we always just talk about the Backlund bump? Well, on the blue line, there's the Tanev bump. So you've got this guy who elevates players around him, and Chris Tanev, you've got two more years left of him. Well, maybe you say to yourself, well, Oliver, good year, really helped, um, really helped our group and was a really important player. But, you know, without Tanev, he struggled. And in the postseason, he wasn't as great. And maybe his effectiveness kind of waned as the year went along. Maybe you sell high on Shillington, move him. Then you don't have to worry about re-signing him and, and whatever that contract negotiation looks like. And then you install, then, then you bring Mackey into that position and see if Connor Mackey can't get the Tanev bump the same way Shillington did. That's something that I do think is, is possible. I just don't think Shillington's getting you a number two center. He might be able to get you a prospect or a decent pick or something like that or another player. I just don't think he's getting you a player as strong as a number two center. He's still only got one year of full-time NHL work under his belt. I do know that, or my my anticipation is that J.P. Barry, his agent, and and his representatives will be looking for a, a pretty significant raise. You know, they they've the Flames have had all the leverage the last few contract negotiations. Now there is a little bit more leverage on the players' side, and I think J.P. Barry is going to be pushing to. Um, to get a little bit more. So maybe if you say, okay, we're going to move out Shillington, we'll sell high on the season that he had, and we'll elevate a guy like Mackey. Uh, now, JF does make the point that Tanev's going to miss the start of the season. We don't know that for sure. There is a chance that Chris Tanev could miss the start of the season, but it's not a guarantee. And remember, when we hear injury update timelines, you usually accelerate them a little bit for NHLers. These are next-level athletic human beings. These are next-level physically gifted human beings, and they typically heal faster than you or I do. So I could absolutely see Tanev being, you know, Tanev might be in the situation like Hannafin and Monaghan were this past training camp. Remember, neither of those guys played in the preseason until right near the very end. They were kind of, they weren't limited, but they were, they were not in preseason games. They weren't taking full contact throughout training camp, and then they were ready for the start of the regular season. I could see that being something that happened with Tanev, but I don't think it's a guarantee he's going to miss the start of the season. It could happen, though, but it's not a guarantee. Uh, finally, JP says the D, D needs to be twenty million dollars. Hannafin, Raz, Valamaki, Tanev, Mackey, and Goodbranson. Stone is the number seven. Something like that could work. I don't. I don't know about Goodbranson and and what we might be looking at for him. And I only say that because he is going to be in line for a raise. I think, and I think there will be suitors for Goodbranson services, knowing what he did this past year, and in knowing that he may price himself out of what Calgary is able to do, especially if they're going to re-sign the guys that they need to re-sign, the big names that they got to re-sign. Um, and Jesse says, I can't remember this franchise ever going through such a pivotal timeline. I have absolutely no idea what to even hope for at this point. Um, yeah, the team chaos must be excited. Yeah. Team Chaos is loving this right now. It is a very, very strange hurry up and wait limbo land right now for the Calgary Flames. Awesome stuff on the live chat. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your texts. As uh, we start to wrap things up on this edition of Flames Nation Live, just wanted to uh, say rest in peace to that man. Uh, Bearcat Murray passes away at the age of 89 on this Tuesday. Um, Ryan Pike with a great article at flamesnation.ca uh, on Bearcat right now. He was the head athletic trainer from day one of the Flames being in this city going back to 1980, and uh, he will absolutely be missed. Uh, I want to play this for you. This is Colin Patterson, who joined us on Sportsnet 960 The Fan, joined the big show on Sportsnet 960 The Fan earlier on this Tuesday. Uh, Colin, of course, uh, with plenty of memories of Bearcat Murray, and uh, he uh, shared some of those memories earlier on Sportsnet 960 The Fan. I just think of a great guy who cared deeply about... Uh, 
the players on the team, whether you were a great player or whether you were a rookie or sitting out or part-time player, he, he made sure he looked after everybody. And he was just a great human, just a great guy. Well, uh, I guess for you, I mean, everybody talks about the 1989 team, and I, I wanted to ask you about this because I saw the uh, the story today posted, just kind of a, a refresher as people are sharing memories of, of Bearcat. Uh, true or false that he is the only athletic trainer to be a plus one? He was on the ice for a goal against the LA Kings, was he not? He was. And that was it was just a bizarre situation. <laughs> and when you think about that happening in the game today, I mean, they're calling back goals for all different things. And Bearcat is actually physically on the ice down by Vernie because Vernie gets hit. I can't remember what happened, but Vernie went down. Bearcat goes flying out, running across those spikes. And he was fast on those things. And he's out there. The play's still going on. Al McKinnis takes a shot and scores. um, And they count the goal. And nobody really disputed the fact that Bear was on the ice. And I'm just looking at it, and you think of today's rules and everything that's gone on in the game. That would have been called back, and they would have been, you know, you would have seen Bearcat striping, you know, going across the ice as fast as he could. It was, it was very bizarre. And actually, we were, we were sort of laughing on the bench, you know, and the fact that they allowed it to be a goal was crazy. Flames alumni Colin Patterson joined us earlier today, this Tuesday on Sportsnet 960, The Fan. Uh, We also had Perry Berezan on, former Flames alumni, uh, on both the Big Show and the Flames Talk podcast feeds, Apple, Spotify, Google, Amazon, wherever you get your podcasts. Here's what I'll say about Bearcat. You know, I, I had the chance to, you know, interact with him multiple times. That guy... And, and this comes right from the mouth of Perry Berezan. For anybody who played for the Calgary Flames during Bearcats' tenure from 1980 to 1996, he was family. And that guy was as much a part of it as anybody else. That guy commanded a room when he walked in. And synonymous with the glory years of the Calgary Flames was Jim Bearcat Murray. When it comes to what he did for the Calgary Flames organization and when it comes to what he did in Southern Alberta and the community, I don't know if there's ever going to be a more full 89 years lived than that man lived. Rest in peace to Bearcat. You will be missed. And uh, that was a hit like a ton of bricks on Tuesday morning. You know, I think that those in the Flames community you know, knew that this was coming, but nonetheless, doesn't make it any less sad. Really, really awesome to see how many were celebrating the life and legacy of Jim Bearcat Murray uh, on this Tuesday. Good way to uh, awesome, uh, awesome responses coming in on Bearcat on the live chat. Thank you very much for your messages, your questions, your comments. One more time, let you know that uh, Flames Nation Live brought to you by our friends at DoorDash. One more time, remind you about the uh, promo code as well. Go download the app. Create the account. Use the promo code FNLiveDD. Just like that, you're getting 25% off and free delivery on your first order. We'll talk to you again soon on Flames Nation Live. Maybe we'll have some news soon. Who the hell knows? Uh, Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your questions. As always, stay safe. Be kind to one another. Be well. It's been Flames Nation Live. I'm Pat Steinberg from Sportsnet 960 The Fan. We've been brought to you by DoorDash. Be well. Have a great rest of your week.